El Día de los Muertos is the day my family and I used to celebrate when I lived in Mexico. We would gather and pray for our relatives that had passed, and we would also celebrate their lives. I was inspired by the beautifully decorated sugar skulls, also known as the calacas, that were placed in the altars of the dead as a gift to them. So today, I'm going to show you how to recreate this look. Alright, so I know this is actually a lot harder than it looks, but it's really time consuming, but it's really not that difficult to recreate. So what I'm doing here is just taking a small eyeliner brush and I'm just picking up some black paint. Um, this is face paint, so it's really nice and pigmented. And I'm just going to draw two symmetrical circles, or I shouldn't call them symmetrical because they are not symmetrical, but I tried. Anyways, now I'm just going to take some white clown paint and apply that all over my face. This is from Craylon, and I'm going to use a sponge and also a brush. I'm using a sponge first to get a lot of the color on the areas where, you know, it's open space. But right in between my eyebrows and on the bridge of my nose, I'm going to switch it out to a brush. Um, and I'm also placing some um, paint on my neck, but I'm later going to wipe that off. So I know you're going to see a lot of white paint there. I'm just going to wipe it off later because I was going to draw my actual like bones and all that. But then my outfit didn't allow. So anyways, here I'm just going to finish filling this in with a brush. All right, so now since we have the white foundation on, I'm just gonna take the super white Ben Nye powder and with a powder brush, I'm just gonna apply this all over the areas where I applied the white paint. This is going to ensure that the paint, that the white paint doesn't smudge or doesn't smear. Now, I'm just gonna take some BH Cosmetics primer. You can take whatever primer you have. I think this is BH Cosmetics. If not, it's probably NYX. And I'm just going to apply that with my um, ring finger from my right hand onto my eyes and then here I'm just going to take a gold pencil from Sigma this is an eyeliner and I'm going to apply this as a base for this gold pigment that we're going to apply now the gold pigment I am applying it wet because I really want it to be really nice and intense and I'm just going to pat this on the eyelid area only So now I'm going to go back in with um, black face paint and I'm just going to start by filling everything except my eyelid where I applied the gold pigment. I'm just going to fill it all in in an, a part that I didn't show and I don't know why this is not recorded but um, I didn't film this part accidentally but after you apply the black paint you want to set it with a black matte eyeshadow and I actually picked out the NYX matte black shadow. Um, so that's what I use just with a flat shader brush right on top of anything that I'm applying um, this weight, uh, this wet face paint. That way it's nice and settled and it doesn't smear and it's also going to intensify the color. Now this is a little diagram, um, a picture of some scalloped edges and this is kind of what I'm going for as far as the design in my eye. I didn't film this part either which is probably the part that I wanted to get half filmed so I'm so so sorry but it's really easy. You just do that design and then I applied some gems on to each little uh, sort of half circle here and then I used glitter um, just gold glitter from NYX just to kind of do the outline and I also have eyeliner here so again I'm so so sorry that I don't have this part um, but hopefully it's pretty easy to see how you can actually recreate it yourself anyways here I'm just gonna draw um, a cobweb and I am sorry if you hear my son screaming in the background <laughs> but I'm drawing a cobweb and I'm just using an eyeliner first just to kind of you know have a basic guideline first and I'm actually looking at a picture because I wanted to see how the cobwebs actually look and that way I can create a nice little replica on my forehead and then here I'm just going to go over it with some physicians formula eyeliner All 
right, so here I'm just going to take some black shadow and I'm using the black shadow just to shade it in a little bit and just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And it's okay if you mess up, you can just take some white paint and just um, like you're going to see later on, I'm just going to use the white paint to just touch up anywhere where there's black and I don't want there to be black. So as you can see, I'm just shading um, some corners, making them look a little bit darker and this makes the cobweb look a lot more realistic. So this is just a pencil brush dipping it back into the matte black shadow that I'm using for my eyes and everything else. And then right in the center, my original design had a heart, but I couldn't fit a heart, so I figured I add a big gem. And the gem, I just placed it with some tweezers and I left some tack, some glue, some eyelash glue just on a little dish getting tacky. And these are just some Dark Angel Fright Night lashes that I picked up at my local drugstore. Um, and I'm just going to place these. I think these went really well because they were nice and flared at the edges. And they had sort of like little butterfly things on the edges. And I really liked it for this look. So I'm just going to pop those on and I'm also going to line them with more eyeliner just to cover up the glue the glue that i'm using is a dark tone glue so it dries black um and then here i'm just gonna actually start doing my nose i'm not doing a crazy design so i'm just going to round off my nose with some black paint and then i'm just gonna make a little tip at the bottom of my nostrils I feel like you know it just gives a little bit more interest and it's not like a dog nose um, so I'm just gonna do this and I'm doing it again with the black paint and just cover it up that way you know this black paint as you can see it's not that pigmented but now that you started to see it look a lot more black I'm using the black shadow which is like the most important thing I feel for your eyes to be like really black and for your nose to be really black so I'm just going to go over it with some shadow. It's kind of like my setting powder for the black. So here I'm just going to go back and make a little bit more, um, just a few touch-ups with some glitter liner in gold. And I know like the little half circles all around my eyes, they're not perfect and they don't have to be because when you put on the little gems, it just takes away from all that attention. But try to make them somewhat the same size. Um, anyways, so here I have um, my black eyeliner and I'm just going to sketch out the design that I want for my chin, which is kind of like three little raindrops. And then here I'm just going to take some white paint and go over the edges just to kind of make it look a little bit more symmetrical. Um, and it's totally fine. I mean, this is all freehand, so you have to try to do the best you can as far as drawing. And this is my first time doing a sugar school. Um, I practiced on a drawing just to see my design, but on my actual face is a whole different experience. Um, it, so yeah, and I'm using eyeliner as well. Here, this is eyeliner and I'm just going to draw a little squiggly design. It's not so perfect the first time, but once you go over it with shadow, it's going to look a lot better. Um, and here I'm just going to do the other side as well. And then here I'm just going to go over it with some liquid eyeliner. Now the eyeliner that I was using, it was a cream liner and it was actually kind of dry so the edges were a little rough. So this is why I'm going in with a pencil brush and some eyeshadow just to kind of blend out the edges and make it look a little bit more nice. So now here I'm just taking black eyeliner and I'm just going to make a few dots, try to re-dip it in the eyeliner. Um, in the liquid a little bit more so you have a fresh little dot and it's nice and pigmented and now you can see on this side I have dots in the bottom 
and that's because I messed up. I, I didn't like the dots in the bottom. So like I said, it's totally fine if you mess up. You can just take some white paint and just kind of paint over it like I did and you can't even see it. So um, here I'm just showing you that I added a few more gems. Now, if you're wondering where I bought the gems, I bought them from Michaels. You can get them in the jewelry uh, section and they come in a lot of different shapes and different sizes. I just got circle little gems and I that's why I placed a big one. Anyways, um, here I am just applying a little bit of black eyeliner because I really want to black out my eyes and I'm also going to tight line which is another step that I didn't film. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why. I think it just stopped recording while I was in the midst of like filming all this. Anyways, so now here is the mouth. The mouth is also a little bit tricky if you don't have like a fresh eyeliner, a cream liner. Um, so I'm just going to take a really fine brush and just sort of, you know, just flick it out a little bit. And then here, like I'm showing you, I'm going back with the white paint just to fix it up. and. If you can flick the outer corners, the better, so they're nice and like pointy at the end. And then um, for the inner parts, I'm just going to take the eyeliner and draw lines um, vertically. All right, and then I'm just gonna put on my costume like I did here, and here's the final look. I would actually ditch the neck piece because it doesn't match my face and my headpiece, but here is the final look. Now I'm just going to show you how to DIY this little floral headpiece to match your costume. You're going to need flowers of your choice. Mine were on sale from Michaels for $1.69, originally three. You're gonna need suede cording, crafting beads, um, what else? A sheet of felt in any color to match, a chalk, some scissors, and a hot glue gun, and also some extra glue just in case. Alright, so first thing you want to do is take out the flower from the stem and you can just snap it off if your flowers do that. If not, make sure you get some dikes and just clip it off. And now here I have all of my flowers set up as I want them in the headpiece. And then next, you want to grab your chalk and start drawing a little circle. Um, it depends on the size of your flower, so I can't really tell you the measurements, but just a circle small enough to cover the, the cord. Now you're going to make enough for each. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to cut out the first one first. And after I cut out the first one, just so they all match, I'm just going to take the first one and lay it on top of the felt again and then cut another circle just tracing around it. And I'm going to do that five different times. So now I chose brown suede cording just to match uh, my headpiece and then here I'm just going to measure out um, the length of my cord just to kind of have a brief idea as to how much I want to leave out hanging and how much you know because the flowers are really big so it's all really going to depend on how big your flowers are. Um, mine are pretty big so I just double 18 plus 18 equals bam this. And here I'm just going to clip off with some dykes this little section that's just popping out because if, if not, it's going to bother your head. So it's really easy. The plastic just comes right off and just clip it right off. Now I'm just going to take some beads, um, I'm actually going to pick out two 
and this is gonna be for the ends um, just so it doesn't untie or come loose and it looks a lot better if you want to reuse your headpiece um, so I'm just gonna close that and then I'm just gonna grab an end of the cord and put these beads right through and then just tie, tie a little knot at the end just to secure it to make sure they don't come off Alright, so I'm just going to measure about maybe four or three inches off the bottom just so I can have some extra space to tie these. I actually would have loved if I made the cord a little bit longer. But anyways, um, what you want to do is take everything from the back of the flower and then put some hot glue gun or hot glue and I just burn myself. <laughs> and um, start by putting on this green little part in the back and then you want to apply more glue and this is going to make sure the flower doesn't come apart and then what you do is you, you take your cord and you place it right on top right in the middle you're going to create sort of like a sandwich and you're going to take your felt and put it right on top of that to cover it so it's nice and secured and then while the glue is still kind of hot you just want to tug on it to make sure all the flowers are nice and close to each other and then you just want to repeat this process for every single flower it's really important that you kind of take the flower apart a little bit and glue some of these sections together because the flower is no longer attached so if you put on if you put some glue right in the center and it kind of seeps through the other flowers then it's going to make sure it's nice and intact and it doesn't come apart so i'm just going to finish this and this is pretty much it guys this is the entire tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching i appreciate it leave me your feedback in the bottom and if you get a chance to try it out hashtag dulce candy so i can see it on instagram and i will talk to you guys later i hope you guys have a great halloween and stay tuned for a few more halloween tutorials Bye.